Hey guys, check this out. This is the Lombard 1000. You guys have been asking me about some budget builds, get a little cheaper build, something you guys can get, just get started out with. This is a great option. Uh, it has a really simple wing, simple, simple design. You can build this out of just some scrap rolls of PLA laying around and the electronics for this are really affordable. Uh, this company really stood out to me. I saw their channel on YouTube and they have a lot of sail planes that they do. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good place to do sail planes out, so I decided to build one of their powered uh, versions. So this is a Longboard 1000. You can also make this into a glider version. There's a different nose front here. Uh, so I'm really excited to fly this plane and bring this budget build to you guys. I'm gonna show you guys how to build this whole thing and I'm gonna show you guys some flight video too. Check this out. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do to start uh, the Longboard 1000 is to get all the parts printed out. Now the printing process is pretty easy. There's only about 19 hours of continuous printing to do. Uh, when you purchase the STL files, it comes with basically two PDF files. The first one is a uh, assembly guide. The second one is a printing guide. So the printing guide basically separates into three different categories for you for all the different parts. Very easy to set up all the settings. Uh, and then go ahead and start printing all your wing parts and a few slash parts or anything else. Uh, there's a couple tips in there that I wanna share with you guys. So uh, one is something like this where you see there's some like basically scarring on the surface of the wing. There's a really simple cause for this. Uh, it's from printing the uh, inner structure before the outer structure. So there's a setting in Cura that you need to make sure you select print the outer wall before the inner wall and that will actually fix uh, the scarring like on your wing sections and things. So the same thing goes for the fuselage parts. So there's some parts that have some infill inside like this tail piece. Uh, and if you print the outer wall before the inner wall, you'll get a nice smooth print. But here's an example where I printed the inner wall first and then that's the scarring that you get. For the motor mount, make sure we print that with ABS. So I printed this with ABS and solid infill. Now for the control service, I did have a problem with the control service not being connected to the wing when it would cut it. So uh, what I did was I just printed them uh, separately. So I printed the uh, wing one section and then the aileron section. Now it is a zip, very thin part to print on your build plate. And so it's very hard to print that. So it did come uh, not very clean uh, print service. So what I did do is I ended up just splitting up the control service into two parts. Uh, I just move it below the build plate in Cura, print the top part, and then flip it over, print the bottom part in Cura. And it comes with two parts. It does improve the quality quite a bit. Uh, and then I'll just use tape to attach the control service to the wing. Now in the redesigned version of the STL files, it does look like it will slice it correctly where it will have the control service attached to the wing. So you can attempt to try that. Uh, they do recommend in the PDF file that you should just use tape instead of this uh, method. And I have that experience using uh, PLA with as a hinge system and it doesn't really last very long. It will last for a little while, it seems like, but it does end up failing most of the time. All right, let's head over to the build table. We'll put this thing together and uh, get this thing ready to fly. Okay, so the first thing we're going to work on for uh, the build is uh, gluing the wing sections together. So make sure you grab a piece of sandpaper and sand the edges so they're nice and flat and a good surface to glue all the parts together. Uh, this does take an 820 millimeter carbon fiber rod to go through the wing sections. Uh, it is difficult to find carbon fiber rods in the U.S. Uh, so I'm going to just use a 400 millimeter long rod. You can find them on Amazon. I'll link in the description below to get these shorter ones. And I'm basically just going to put it in the center section of the wing. Uh, it'll just add a little bit of strength in the center section and then the ends of the wings will be fine. Uh, I'm going to use it as an alignment tool though. So like for these sections here, I'm going to go ahead and just slide this into here uh, and then glue this together and then pull the uh, rod out and just use it as an alignment tool to glue the sections together and then I'll just leave it in the center section when I'm all done. So here I'm just using some 220 grit sandpaper to clean up all the edges. And then we're gonna use some medium CA glue. I use Zappagap medium CA glue, it works pretty good. Um, but basically any off the shelf uh, medium CA glue, and medium is just the thickness of the glue. It's just a little bit thicker than like a thin set. Uh, so that way it can fill in gaps and have a better adhesive.
Now that we have those wing sections glued together, we're gonna take our four millimeter carbon fiber rod, mark the center, and then we'll lay it onto the center section of the wing, mark the side where it'll go into the uh, wing here. I'm gonna add glue, I'm gonna add a little bit of twist to it as I insert that into the wing, that way it just smears that glue all around. And then I'm gonna glue the center section of the wing and the other half together. So like I mentioned before, I did separate the control surfaces into uh, four smaller sections to have the print quality come out a little bit better. But if you uh, just print them out all as one piece, then you'll just have uh, two uh, pieces to glue together. So once we have the control surfaces all glued together, we're gonna make sure they fit into these uh, slots. So we can just use a little bit of sandpaper or a hobby knife and just file it down a little bit to make sure that they fit. Uh, with a little bit of a gap on each side so we don't have any rubbing on the wing. Uh, so I'm gonna use this 3M hinge tape. I'll have a link up to it in the description below. Uh, basically any tape will work okay for this. Uh, definitely like uh, duct tape I think works almost the best because it has a little bit of a cloth fiber inside the duct tape. Uh, so it actually uh, works pretty well. Uh, I didn't have any duct tape that I wanted to use for the color of this plane, but I'm just gonna use this clear uh, hinge tape. Okay, now I'll grab two 3.7 gram servos instead of the controls. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use 1.2 millimeter push rod wire. I'll put it on a Dremel tool to make the holes in the control horns a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna use a uh, cutter to cut down the control horn. I'm gonna take the sticker off one side of the servo so I can glue it in place. I'll bind the receiver to the transmitter and I'll plug the servos in to make sure that the servos are in the centered position and the trims are at zero. And then we'll put the control horn in place on the uh, servo at the right orientation uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and slide the uh, servo wires through the wing here and I actually end up gluing these in the wrong orientation so I glue them with the control horn farthest away from the control service but they actually should be flipped 180 degrees so that way the control horn is closest to the control service uh, but I'll show you guys why that didn't work in a minute here uh, hook it to the receiver and I'm gonna center the servos a little bit with the trim on the servo we're gonna put a little piece of tape on the control horn to center it. We'll put a Z-bend on both ends, this 1.2 millimeter wire, put that in place on the control horn and glue it in place. Now you can see here where the servo cover, and the, I put it, made it so that the wire just goes closest to uh, the exit location, but that made it not work for where the control horn's at on that ser servo cover. So we're gonna put that front part of the fuselage on and then we'll slide this uh, servo cover in place. I just cut a little slit in there because I should have done it before. I should have put this on before I did that control wire, but uh, we're just gonna glue that in place. You can use screws if you want to. Uh, you could use this your Dremel tool with a one millimeter wire on it and drill those holes out if you want, and then put little servo screws in place, but I'm just gonna go ahead and glue them in place. All right, well that completes the wing. Uh, it looks pretty good. You can see there, there's a little bit of a dihedral to that. So it'll add to some stabilization when it's flying. Uh, very simple uh, build, very lightweight, uh, easy to install the servos and everything. Now to keep on the budget build here, uh, well, when I do decals and stuff, it can take some time to design. 20 to 30 bucks for some decals. That's almost more than I paid for electronics. Uh, so we're gonna just go with a can of spray paint and some masking tape and just tape off some lines here uh, to do some graphics on here. Uh, you know, three to four bucks for a can of spray paint and uh, we're keeping uh, this build nice and cheap. So let's uh, mask it off and we'll get some paint on here uh, and then we're gonna finish up the fuselage and this thing will be ready to fly. So for the masking tape, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut it in half so it's a little bit thinner strips and that'll allow me to make a little bit of a curvature on the wing how I want to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just take this out to the side and spray a couple of light coats on there. Okay, so once we get to this stage in the build, there's a few different options for a motor or if you wanna make this just a glider. So uh, there's the short nose and a long nose version. Uh, the short nose is for like a heavier motor, like a 2212 uh, that I'm gonna use, 1400 kV motor. Uh, there's also a long nose, which just extends out a little further. 
Uh, for a smaller motor or for the glider version, that allows the counterweight to be a little bit farther forward to get the CG set right. Because I'm using a little heavier battery, you don't need as much counterweight in the nose. Uh, I did notice, uh, just because of the design of the motor, how it's got a little bit of a lip here, it did rub a little bit on this front part of the fuselage part here. Uh, now it's a super easy fix, you can just take a Dremel tool and just grind this out just a little bit so that way this uh, nose of this motor can stick through and it won't rub right there. But what I actually did was, this is only uh, 0.8 millions, it's like two layers. So in Kira, you can just move this uh, negative 0.8 below the build plate, and then that'll eliminate this uh, motor mount section here, and that's for the smaller motor. Uh, so that'll just eliminate that, and it'll make an open front just like this, and then your uh, 2212 motor will just sit right in here. Uh, it'll have nice cooling on the front there. Now for the glider version, there is a nose section, and there's a little bit of a hole here to put the counterweight into there. So what you're gonna do there is just add the counterweight into the nose, glue that onto the front there, and then you're gonna have your glider nose in there, and then you can just add your uh, battery and your receiver in there. Okay, to attach the motor, we'll just uh, add a little bit of Loctite to the screws and secure the motor mount to the motor. And then we'll just add a little bit of glue down into the fuselage here and insert the motor mount. And then we'll glue the tray in place. To attach the fuselage together, I did use an 8 32nd by inch and a half screw. It's a little difficult to find metric uh, screws and especially specialty screws like a nylon screw. Uh, so uh, this 8 32nd did fit. I did have to file down the nut just a little bit to fit into the slot on the bottom of the fuselage. Uh, but the screw fits in there easily into the uh, section here on the top. We'll go ahead and tighten that down. And on the bottom where it sticks out a little bit, we'll just snap that off. Some of the lock on the canopy, you just go ahead and insert this top section, put a small amount of glue onto this little slot into the lock here, and then we'll go ahead and put that right on the top section there. For the foldable prop, I ordered this prop, but it has this really big spinner that it came with, so I'm gonna use a spinner that 3D Prints has available on their site, so I printed out both of them. I use a little bit of file to make sure that the blades fit easily. I use the screws to the spinner that I purchased. I'll put a link in the description for the spinner that I use. Run a three millimeter drill bit in there to fit that onto this there, and then we're tightening on that screw. Now let's take it out to the field and we'll set the CG up and see how it flies. All right, so we got a nice evening out here. Uh, we got this all set up. I got the uh, I got a three cell 45 milliamp battery, and it's tucked in right here, just behind kind of the back, basically as far back as I can get it. Uh, you see, it's a little bit of a tight fit there, and the ESC there, and the receivers on the top. Uh, so I do want to make sure that you set the CG. Uh, the canopy just clips right on here, and there's a little clip that we just clip on there like that. So the CG is right about where the servos are sitting at. So holding it here, it's a little breezy out here, but they're about the, there's about the CG. So let's start on the scale and see what we get for ready to fly away. Yeah, so we're at like just right at 400 grams. It's like 397. I've been waiting uh, here at the field for a little bit. The wind died down a little bit, so we're gonna see if we can get a maiden in here before that wind picks up again. This plane was a really fun build. I cannot recommend this enough to anybody that's been thinking about getting a 3D printed airplane. Uh, this is a great plane to start out with. Uh, it doesn't take very much to get it flying, electronics are very basic, and the, there's not much PLA to use. Uh, 3D Prints is an awesome company. They take lots of recommendation from their customers, and if you guys have any suggestions on how to improve any of their models, they're always improving their models and making changes, and they love to get their customers involved uh, in the process of designing stuff, so definitely reach out to them, give them any ideas you guys have. They have some really cool planes. They just released a free to print glider, so definitely go check that out. You guys can download the STL files for free. Uh, this version is a very affordable to buy the STL files for this and super easy to set up and really fun to fly. Hey guys, so this thing was super fun to fly. I actually crashed it on the first flight. Check this out. <laughs> As you can see, it just crashed right there. Uh, it was totally my fault. I just didn't do a good pre-flight check and I had the controls uh, set up backwards. 
Uh, and so uh, I was just worried about the wind and the sun going down. I just set up the controls backwards. and uh, But then I did a quick repair out here at the field, glued it together on the nose, put a little rubber band because I broke the canopy a little bit, and uh, chucked it, and it flew super, super good, even with my crazy repair here uh, with a bunch of CA glue. Uh, but this thing flew super good. I'm definitely going to go back. I got a couple canopies at home from showing you guys some different clips. So I'm going to change the canopy out, and I'll be definitely out here flying this thing again. This was super fun to fly. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next build.